How's it going everybody? Dstosh here. And with everybody talking about graphics, I think I found a far greater threat to Halo Infinite. The Games of Service model. Yes, I have stated the statement that shall not be stated, but I think that Halo Infinite will have a Games of Service model. I mean, how can they not if they're going to support the game for 10 years? But with this video, I wanted to talk about how they can make it not suck. So without further ado, let's jump into this. So the first thing people think about when they hear Games of Service is the DLC. And for multiplayer, I would love to have frequent updates, maybe on a monthly basis, add new maps, kind of like Modern Warfare. But in terms of single player, that gets a little bit more complicated. Now, I don't want monthly single player DLC. I'm pretty sure if they did that, Steve Down's vocal cords would dry up and split out of his neck. But I would love to see maybe yearly large DLC, something akin to maybe what MMOs do. Now, I don't want Halo Infinite to be an MMO, far from it, but I think the format like ESO does where they release a big expansion every year, I think that could work for Halo Infinite, especially for story. Now, in terms of the pay model for this DLC, I think that if they don't have a battle pass, they should, you know, charge like a DLC and maybe charge something, maybe 30 bucks if it's a really big expansion. I mean, I'm talking about maybe Halo 3 ODST levels of content, but if you do have a battle pass, I do not want to pay for that crap. If you're going to make money from a battle pass, you don't need to make money from that DLC. Now, while I'm fine with the battle pass, I'm however not fine with loot boxes. I do not want to see a loot box in Halo Infinite. Now, I think battle passes have basically replaced loot boxes, and while battle pass isn't a perfect system, I'd much rather have that than loot boxes. Loot boxes are just the antithesis of what I want Halo progression to be. Halo progression is all about unlocking that next armor set and you knowing what you're getting. You're grinding for that armor. But with Halo 5, they just made it like a big random slot machine where, you know, you spend like three years trying to get Helljumper and then you give up and then two years later you randomly get it. It's just not satisfying and I hope that they stay far away from loot boxes and or rec packs. Now the next thing is something that Destiny 2 is doing, and while Destiny 2 is a lot better than it was at launch, I do not like this. And basically, they're vaulting content. Now what does that mean? Well basically, they're going to be rotating DLCs and locking some away where you can't play them. I don't want this for Halo Infinite. I think that everything that's added to the game should be left in the game. We shouldn't arbitrarily choose things to get rid of to focus on other things. I think that everything in the game should be celebrated and we shouldn't get rid of it. So if we get like a year one DLC and then five years later we get rid of that and then we move on to another one, I don't want that. I want to have all the content there and I don't want to lose it, especially if we're paying for it. Moving on to my next point, this kind of ties into the whole DLC thing, but it also ties into the main game. And that point is, I want the main game to have a complete story and I also want these DLCs to have complete stories. If we're looking at a 10 year gap between mainline Halo games, I want these stories to be meaningful, especially the main game. I don't want a big cliffhanger at the end. I want a strong beginning, middle, and end. Now, I know 343 have said that it's a full plot, but if you're doing a games of service model and it's gonna last 10 years, you're gonna have some type of cliffhanger at the end. I just hope that it doesn't have detriment to the story and Halo Infinite has a strong plot. And that goes for the DLCs as well. I want each DLC to have its own self-contained story and I don't really want an episodic thing like Spartan Ops. I just think that the DLCs should be big enough where they can tell a complete story. Now this next point is kind of like the thing I'm most worried about and I'm gonna spend a lot of time on it and that's basically, I want this game to be a complete game at launch. I don't want them to use the games of service model as an excuse to finish it later. We've already seen hints of this with, oh, flighting is gonna be more important after launch. While I believe in testing your updates, I don't want the entire game to be still in development. I want a complete package, and let's get into what that means. So for this to be a complete Halo game, in my eyes, it has to have at least four main game modes. And what I mean is not multiplayer, I'm talking about like actual game sections. So I'm talking about campaign, firefight, forage, and a complete multiplayer. Now, I think with campaign, we're pretty safe. And with multiplayer, of course, it's going to be their day one. But I want all of the multiplayer to be there, okay? Um, now, infamously, Halo 5 actually launched with a lot of its modes missing in multiplayer. I'm talking about BTB, and even Infection. And 
Infection is like the basis of a lot of custom games, even if you're not playing Infection in custom games. Infection is like the groundwork for most custom games, so you gotta have Infection in there. I can't wait half a year again to get that. That has to be there day one. That also goes for BTB. I want Halo to be, you know, Halo again, and have Warthogs and ghosts going around big maps and having fun. As for the next game mode I want to see at launch, that would be Firefight. Now, to me, Firefight is something that should always be in Halo ever since Halo 3 ODST. They just got better. Well, I mean, got better to reach, and then after that it kind of took a nosedive. But, yeah, I just... I want Firefight to build on what Reach did. I mean, why are we so far behind in terms of <laughs> Firefight? We we really should be seeing innovations in Firefight rather than, you know, going back. I mean, the Halo 5 Firefight was basically just Warzone with no enemy team. I mean, we need Firefight back. It's one of the staples of Halo at this point, and I just hope the game launches with it. Now, last but not least, we have Forge. Now, I wouldn't even be bringing this up, because, yeah, of course Forge would be there day one, but with Halo 5's case, we had to wait an entire month after release for Forge. So, yeah, please don't do that again. I want Forge to be there day one, and I'm expecting some pretty big innovations. If they went to a different engine, I want to see a lot of new things. Like, I would love to see AI, terrain editing, crafting your own missions. I mean, Far Cry does it. I think it's time for Halo to do it as well. But yeah, just hope it's there day one. Don't want to wait a month. Please, 343, I beg of you. And next up, we have the Battle Pass. Yes, I've been talking about it a lot, and we don't even know if a Battle Pass will be in Halo Infinite, but judging by how MCC is being run, I'm pretty sure it'll be there. Just hope there's no rec packs. But let's talk about the Battle Pass. So with the Battle Pass, I think it should be close to Modern Warfare system. So what is that system? So you have a free tier and a paid tier, basically, you pay 10 bucks for the paid tier, and you go through it. And then you have the free tier, which you unlock some items, uh, but not as many. And you basically accumulate currency in that free tier, and then eventually you can actually buy the paid tier without spending money. Now, it's not a perfect system, but I think realistically that's what we're looking at. Now, how I think this should be run? Well, I think that armors should be treated like weapons are in Modern Warfare. So, in Modern Warfare, you have these weapons, and every free weapon they add is in the free tier. The higher uh, paid tier is basically just you get more cosmetic items and you get blueprints. Now, what I am thinking for Halo Infinite is that in the free tier, all of the armor should be in there. But in the paid tier, you could have some, you know, other armors that are just uh, touched up versions of the one in the free tier. What I'm talking about is basically... Think about, like, the HCS armor in Halo uh, 5. I think it's Athlon. Basically, you have the regular Athlon, but then you have, like, an HCS Athlon with, like, red, white, and blue, and it's all fancy. I think that, for this example, that Athlon should be in the paid tier, and then regular Athlon can be in the regular tier. Now, again, not perfect, but I'm just trying to think of a way where they could do this and not piss everyone off. But I'm pretty sure they're going to do it, especially with how we're looking at MCC and how they're running that game. On the bright side, MCC is doing it a little bit differently where you unlock basically pages of what you can unlock and then you get tokens and you can unlock them in any order you want for that page. And that kind of mimics the Halo Reach unlock system. So if they could have that in Halo Infinite, that'd be great. And last but certainly not least, I don't want Halo Infinite to lose its identity throughout the 10 years it'll be online. Now, I know that, you know, if the game is bad, it needs to change, but assuming that Halo Infinite is a good game at launch, I don't want that 10 years to basically morph the game into something else. I want it to be, you know, crystallized and keep its form, basically, and, you know, continue as Halo Infinite and not turn into something else. We kind of saw this with Halo 5, and while a lot of Halo 5 wasn't great, I think the core gameplay was pretty strong, and I think that... The changes they made to it were at the detriment of the game. The way they changed the BR, the SMG, and even a core game mode like Breakout. It kind of just morphed the game into something else later on, and while, you know, maybe it's better now overall, there's still parts of that game that I miss, like Breakout. But anyway, that's basically my thoughts on the live service model for Halo Infinite. It's not confirmed, but I think it's a pretty big certainty at this point. 
Anyway, if you have any thoughts on this topic, please leave them in the comments. And remember, if you liked the video, please like it, and if you really liked it, try subscribing. This was Destosh, and I'll see you in the next one. Destosh out.